Hi everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So I'm going to show you how to make a 6x4 twist and pop card. This is actually the one that you're going to see in the tutorial today. So that's the front and then you open it up and out pops this panel with all this lovely shiny detail inside. And then on the back of the card you have all this space to write your message. So that's that version. I also, this is the same on the front and then inside you have this one here. And then I've also got this one. You are magic and then inside you have this pop out and then I also have some more inspiration in terms of how to decorate the front is these ones here so you can see there how those look and those are going to be stuck onto my samples so if you watch the launch of this when I was on Hachanda these are some of the samples so actually the front for this one is here and then I have this one and I think that was the one I was going to put on the front. I think that looks really cool. And then this one is yeah, going to have, I think it was this one on the front. So you can just see the different ways to decorate these. And then I have two more, this one. I think that was one of the ones I actually done as the live demo. I'm really limited on time, so they're quite basic. So it's been really nice today to be able to, you know, have some time and show you all of the detail that you can create using the dies to make these really fun cards. So let me show you how to make it. Okay, so here is the six by four twist and pop card. So you can see you've got your mechanism, your panels, that will cut your actual six by four card blank. You've got your mats and layers for both, and then you've got all these elements here to decorate. And I'm also using the, let's hear it for the girls, it's the geodes paper pad that I've done, and I'm using the black and white marble but all of these would go really nice actually because I was kind of playing around with them but because I'm using holographic and silver I didn't go for this one here because that one would look really nice if you use yeah like a gold mirrored cardstock with it you can see the one there with the foiling that would look really nice as a background for the twist and pop so that's the paper pad so what I've gone ahead and done is I've die cut everything so I'm just going to talk you through what I've done so first of all I'm going to have the pink as my card blank so this is this big die here, so you just want to run that one through. And then there's your panel and that's your mechanism and I've done the same in the pink there. Okay, so you can see those. Then I've also gone ahead and cut four pieces in black using the matte die, this one here, just inside. I'll take it out just so you can see, okay, so that's not too clear, but it's that one there. And then what I've done is cut by hand the white just to go on top again. So I've got um, that background to be able to stamp and write my message. So this one's actually gonna be for the front cover. So I'll talk you through that one later. And this is gonna be the back. So this is where I'll write my message. We'll do all of that in a minute. What you wanna do first of all is always when you're making the twist and pop, you wanna lay down your backgrounds, your mats and your layers first of all. So I'm gonna have this black one here and this one here. And then I've also cut these in the that paper, pattern paper, slightly smaller. And I'm gonna have this one on the back and then this one, I've planned it, so I'm gonna have this one on the back and then I'm gonna die cut all of the sentiment dies across all of the twist and pop. So the five by seven, the six by six and this one. They're designed to be cut into the cardstock. Now, because of the pattern, this area's got more of a kind of, it's the plainest part. And I'm gonna lay down the Hey presto and cut that into this so that you will see the black coming through and then that will highlight the sentiment. So I'll do that in a moment. First of all I'm going to stick down these three pieces. Okay so that's those stuck down so now with this one I'm just going to grab a little bit of tape just to position it in place. Take some of that stickiness off. So I'm just going to have it about a quarter of an inch from the bottom. That looks about right. So I'm just going to stick that there and run that through my machine. Okay, so I'm going to take this away. I want to keep any of the negative pieces. I mean, you don't have to. You might not want to piece those back in. It still looks nice without. I'll just get rid of all of that. Like I said, you can keep this because you just have to position it. And it will, you know, spell out the hey presto. But now, when you lay this down over here, you see how it pops against that black cardstock and then I'll just paper piece those pieces back in there. So I'm just going to stick this one down. And then I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue on my hand. Use my pokey tool. 
and I'm just going to pop some glue and pick up the negative pieces and just pop them back in. Okay, so there's the hay presto now all die cut into that. You could also die cut this again and then piece it back in to here in a different colour, maybe like in the pink or something. Okay, so next I'm going to decorate the panel because it's always best to do this while it's flat. So I've gone ahead and already die cut the smaller square there in the white and then I've just stamped and die cut different elements from the dies and some of the elements here from the stamp set. So I've used the dice there and I've stamped the surprise. And I've done different colours. This is the one, so I die cut it first in black and then in white and I just cut the end off there so you get more of an authentic looking wand. You've got them more there and I've just um, paper pieced the different colours. And then I've done the rabbit there and I just backed it with a little bit of black card behind the eye. So I'm gonna stick them all down. Okay, so that's all stuck down and then what you can do is you just want to do a concertina fold. So you want to do a valley, a mountain, just follow the score lines and then finish with a valley. So you've got like a little book and then when it opens up you want to have an M shape. But now that's all ready to pop out of the card. And then I'd already gone ahead and die cut this and I always just like to add an extra score line. Not an extra score line, I just like to go over the score lines. I've already done this, but I'll just show you what I mean. Just across the cross section here. So I just find any track and just line it up with that track and just embed that score line just a little bit more. And you'll just find it'll help you when you go to fold it. And then what you want to do is just do a mountain fold across the cross section and then this score line here will become a valley fold and then when you bring it all down you want it to line up and just pull it apart so they lie down next to each other so you have this here okay next you're going to be sticking this piece with the folded side away from you that's going to go inside here you want the open facing you and you want it so that it's sat between these two pieces here Okay, now what I like to do is lay it down first of all. So you want the point to sit just up. You don't want it touching the score line, you want it kind of, well, you just want it there. You don't want to go over the score line because you want this to be able to close without it all, you know, buckling. So keep this all nice and straight. Try and get it as centered as possible. If you're slightly off, it will rock. So you just want to make sure you get it nice and centered. And then bring this out whilst it's between these pieces to the edge of the card here. Okay, and make sure you've got an equal amount overhanging. And then I'm just going to mark with a pencil just there and flip it over and just mark there. Now take that away, and this is where now we can add our glue. It just it's handy to have that little pencil mark there so it stops you adding glue in other areas because whenever you you know working with a card that's got any movement, you know, kinetic card, you don't want to pop glue anywhere where it shouldn't be. So again, make sure you've got the opening facing you and you're just going to sit that now in there up to that pencil line, making sure you've got a little bit of overhang there. And it's good to use the liquid glue because it gives you that wiggle room. So I'm just going to let that dry for a second. The key again with these cards is to let the glue dry completely. You don't want to be attempting to you know stick it all in and then open it because if it's not completely dry then it's just going to lift because there's a lot of tension and pressure on the, the twist and pop mechanism. Okay so whilst that's still drying I'm going to pop some glue on the back of the triangle and just make sure you get right up to the points and I just like to go in with my finger and just rub that up, you know all over and then you're going to sit that in the middle. Now if you'd like to put a little pencil mark at the centre there then you can but again just wiggle it around making sure that the arrow bit here is straight or parallel and that this is again parallel with the edge of the card here. And then I'm going to do the same and add some glue onto the top section here. Again just move that glue around so it gets right into the corners and close the card up.
And now this is when I would suggest you just leave this, put something heavy. I'm just going to pop my pencil sharpener on top of it there and just leave that. And next I just want to show you a few little like tips and techniques with the dies. So I'm going to have the bunny popping out of the hat on the front. So I'm going to re recreate this look here. So this is a card that I've already done. I'll take this one out to show you, see how it looks on the front. And then when you open it, this all pops out from the inside. But I want to show you how you can create this layered look. And with this particular die, this has got a slot here so you can pop all these little elements inside. So what you want to do is using this die here is what you know if you are doing multiple colours like myself, I've die cut it in a pink, a black, and a white. So the black is going to be the main base one. Okay, and then what you want to do is all I want from this one is just the white ears. So I'm just going to now snip into it and just literally just cut out the ears. But because it's already embossed, it's very easy to follow the shape. And once you get down to this bottom bit, I'll just do this side. This part now is where there's a little just slot in there. So it's very easy, if I just snip the edge there, then it should just come away, there we go. That bit just comes out. And now what you can do is just add some glue onto the back. And I'm just gonna stick that now over the same embossed ears on the black piece. Okay, so now we can really see those bunny ears popping out of the hat. And then with the pink one, all I actually want here, I mean, you don't have to actually cut the whole thing out in pink. You could just lie a strip of pink over this embossed strip that's on the hat. And I'm just going to follow along that line. Like so, so I can get rid of that. Or I keep those bits because they're good to paper piece when you go to you know, make some other ones. And then just pop some glue on the back. And then you're just going to stick that one over that same spot. Okay, now, now also a lot of the dies are actually stencils as well. So I'm going to now take that one and I'm going to pop it back into the die, like so. And now I'm going to use these gaps here as stencils for me to be able to pop some detail into the ears. So I've got a pink colour here. And I'm just going to with a blending brush, just colour in that section and then if I lift it away, you've now got that detail. And I'm also, while I've got that, oh no, I've done the pink ones already, I'm going to show you how to do that with the dice. But any of the dies that you see, so here, along this panel, these can all be stenciled. These can all be stenciled here. Um, all of the little ones here, the diamond, there's yeah, quite a few on there that you can do and it's just a really nice effect. So now we've got all this ready and you just want to make sure I haven't put any glue through that. But if I got my pokey tool there, there we go. You can just see the gap. Just make sure you don't glue it together when you stick the ears back on there. Okay, so that's that already. Then I can start building this up on the card. So I've already gone ahead and cut all of these pieces. So again, I'll show you now how you can feed these bits in. So I'm going to pop a little bit of glue on the edge, on the end there, and then I'm just going to open that up and just slide that inside. And then you can kind of decide where you want it to kind of sit. I'm going to get the wand. I'm doing the same as that one because I really liked it when it was the first one I'd done and I was really pleased with how it came together. And then again, just open that up, and just feed that in there. And then I'm going to pop some foam pads on the back of this. So have a look at dies in your stash as well, because you might have some that you, you, know, you can use as a stencil to create more detail. I know a lot of the paper discovery dies, Olga designed hers to be like that. And it's just a fun way just to, like I said, add a bit more detail. So now I'm going to lay this one down about there. I kind of, I had another one so I positioned it so I made sure my sentiment was in the right place. But I like to add a bit of foam because it just gives it a natural shadow then. And then I've got all of these pieces so I'm going to 
have this same effect here. So I've already stenciled the diamond, which I'm going to pop there, and the heart, which can go just in there. And then again, I'll just show you how to get that effect. So I've just got my black ink this time, and I've die cut the dice. I'm just going to pop it back in to the die there. And then I'm just using a dauber, and I'm just going to dab black ink. Brush probably you won't get as messy, but I don't mind. I'll just take that off there, you can see you've got your little dice. And again, it works the same way with these little playing cards. So you just piece them back in, dab it over the top, and you'll get a little playing card. And they're so cute, I love all these little details. Okay, so that's all done. I've put them on some foam on the back, but also if you die cut the key, you get all these little circles that will come out from the, you know, as the negative pieces here. So I've just kept them because you'll see where I've added them in here and they just look really nice as an extra little bit of detail. So I'm now just gonna copy that arrangement and stick these down. Okay, so I'll just bring it up there so you can see it. But I think it looks adorable. It's one of my favorite kind of elements from this whole collection. So now this will be nice and dry and then when you open it up you have your pop out. I think it looks really really cool. I love this one. So now I'm going to stick this onto the front and then I've just got some other little bits of decoration to pop inside and the card is done. Okay, so that's stuck on the front and that's on the back now as well. And then I'm just going to add this, I love this one, it's the little wand that says you are magic. I'm gonna pop that one on there. Now make sure when it closes that nothing would, you know, cause you might put something on foam here. Just make sure that when it closes, it wouldn't catch. And this is, the, you know, this is gonna be fine. But I'm just gonna add some glue on this one and stick those other pieces down. Okay, so once again, there's the front of the card and then you open it up and you have that lovely pop-up feature. I love the holographic cardstock there as well, catching the light. And then on the back, you've got all that space to be able to stamp and write your message. So I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. I'll link as much as I can, as always, in the description box below. Check out my Twist and Pop playlist as well, because there's more inspiration over there. And I'll be back very soon with another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.